I have been playing Minecraft Hardcore in the 1.20 version of the game for well over 3000 days. Today I will update to the 1.21 and explore everything this update has to offer, ranging from looting a trial chamber over getting all the new advancements to a max enchanted mace. So grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy these next 150 days. Before I can update though, there is one issue I need to address and it has to do with this. See, Mojang fixed stacking raid farms in this update and therefore my source of redstone has been cut off. To make sure I have enough redstone for the foreseeable future, I'll spend Spend some time afking here before I update the world. So let's add some shulker loaders to the storage. Here's the schematic and I even added an LA to have a slice for totems as well. Before building I should probably clear out all these items and bring them over to my main base. Now that that is done and sorted, I can remove the old storage system. Let's grab some resources and finally build the shulker loaders. All that is left is to get an LA in there, which will pick up totems and sort them for us. Let's also not forget to stock it with empty shulker boxes. Well then, let's AFK this raid farm one last time and get a good amount of redstone before updating to 1.21. That way I should have enough resources until I build a witch farm for my future redstone needs. While AFKing, I found some problems with the shulker loaders. For one, the LA kept unlinking itself from the note block, so I added a redstone clock that continuously powers the note block on an interval. Also, there was an issue with some quasi connectivity, which caused non-full shulker box Boxes to be stored. After moving the filters up by one block, all the issues are now resolved, and I can finally spend some time AFKing here. The next day. After 4 ish days, we have plenty of resources from the raid farm, and I can finally say goodbye to it. It has served me well, and I am somewhat sad they fixed stacking raid farms. Sure, they were overpowered, but so helpful for getting all my redstone needs covered for all these massive projects. Anyways, it's time to update this world to 1.21. Uh. Well, 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 it is done. 95% of all the mods that are used in 1.20 have been updated as well to work on this version of the game. It's always a lot of work checking whether all the mods and their versions work with one another, then changing all the settings again. But apart from some settings with the sounds, I still need to adjust. We're all set. Well, kinda. There has been a change to the size of the spawn chunks. Instead of the original 19 by 19 chunks, technically 23 by 23, if we include lazy chunks, they are now only 3 by 3 chunks. This breaks my login detector, which automatically turns on my mob switch upon logging into this world. Also, the warden switch is now outside of the spawn chunks, meaning I would need to install a chunk loader there, which would be a much easier thing to fix than the whole mob switch. So instead of extending the entire tunnel of the mob switch, plus moving the obelisk a couple of blocks, I'll simply revert that change using a program called NBT Explorer, giving us the original size of the spawn chunks. I mean, Mojang did this mainly to reduce lag, I believe, but my PC can handle the bigger spawn chunks, so we're good. Now, before I move on to exploring the new update, there is one thing I need to take care of first. Last episode, I made this massive perimeter which stretches a thousand by a thousand blocks all the way down to bedrock. With that came a new tradition to add names on these walls, specifically your names. So here are the first couple of names that will be placed on the wall. Thank you so much to everyone who left a comment and if you want your name on here as well simply comment it down below it's that easy these are the first six names and i'll continue this until all the walls are fully filled with names and there is no more room left well then let's move on to the exploration of the 1.21 starting with some easy things first let's craft a new crafter which will be very useful in the future simple enough then i want to focus on the new tough blocks these look really good and all i need is tough and a stone cutter <laughs> Well, that was easy. Then moving on to copper. This will be a little harder or at least more time consuming as I need to wait for some oxidization to happen. Okay, I need a bit more honeycomb for the waxed copper. Yoink. And also some more copper itself. There should be plenty underneath my base. Let's spread out these blocks so they oxidize a bit faster. Again, I am out of honeycomb. Let's fill up this side of the honey farm with cheers. Then change the entire module out to farm honeycomb instead of only the bottom row. Okay, this should be enough honeycomb for now. Well then, let's wait a couple of years until we have the oxidized versions as well. 
Okay, this took a bit longer than expected. By the way, I have now also fixed the sound issues from before and made minor changes to the resource pack. For example, the enchantment glint is now rainbow instead of purple. Next up is the trial chamber. I have no idea on how I am supposed to loot this thing, but here goes nothing. Let's get a map, fly over there and check this thing out. Then ignore Minecraft's most overrated rule. And here we go. On my first spawner against some silverfish, I instantly found my first trial key. These can be used to open vaults to get new items. After finding some more mobs from the spawners, I realized these were actually tougher than I thought. I brought my health down pretty low a couple of times. Anyways, I then found an ominous vault. These can only be opened with an ominous key. In order to acquire these, we need to activate the trial spawner while having the bad omen effect, for which I now need to drink an ominous bottle acquired from a pillager captain. This activates a spawner and turns it ominous, which is even harder to conquer than a normal one. Mobs spawn with armor and stronger weapons. Some are even enchanted, and in addition, lingering potions and other projectiles are being dropped on you. But we'll get to that later. Anyways, here is my first vault, and we get absolute garbage. In the next room, I then then found my first breeze, one of the two new mobs added in this update. They drop breeze rods that can either be turned into the wind charges or they can be used to craft a new weapon, the mace. Then I wanted to take this opportunity to get one of the harder advancements. We need to defeat a breeze by redirecting one of its own projectiles. And here we go. Then we can simply use an axe on a copper bulb to get one more advancement. And while I'm at it, let's use a wind charge to jump up a couple of blocks, crossing yet another one of the list. After almost dying and opening a few more vaults with the acquired keys, I found an ominous bottle in one of them. I decided to fight the spawners with bad omen, turning them into ominous trials. This also bypasses the cooldown of the spawner. The silverfish were not that different, there were simply more of them spawning, but nothing I couldn't take care of. And then we got a potato out of that. Anyways, I continued to fight more spawners and then I got bullied so far, I decided to pull out the bow. And after all of that, all I got was some more potatoes and other useless loot. There were still a few more spawners I could activate. So I did some more fighting and finally found my first ominous key. So I immediately went to an ominous vault and opened it. I got a god apple out of it, but other than that, nothing useful either. Then I managed to pop a totem while fighting the last few spawners. At least I got another ominous key out of that battle. In the final room of the trial chambers, I opened more vaults and found one of the two new smithing templates, the bold armor trim. Then I opened an ominous vault with my remaining key and got an enchanted book. I got excited as this is the only way to get a wind burst book. They will always be level one, which means I need four in total to get the maximum level. But sadly, it was a density book, which is cool, I guess. But this enchantment you could get through trading with villagers, unlike the wind burst books. Since my totem popped earlier, I also lost the bad omen effect, but thankfully I have another ominous bottle I can slurp to also clear this last room with ominous trials. Unfortunately, nothing useful came out of these. Here's all the loot I gathered from my first attempt at a trial chamber. I got breeze rods and wind charges, the bold armor trim, a density 4 book, two god apples, and also some new pottery shirts. After returning home, I wanted to get another easy advancement. It requires me to craft a crafter using a crafter, so I simply did that. Then I also found out two advancements I had gotten in the sixth episode of this series, I no longer had them completed. These were Monsters Hunted, where I now also need to kill a Breeze and a Bog, the second new mob in this update, and 2x2, two two, where I am now missing the Armadillo that I have never bred. So after a quick Google search, I found out Armadillo spawn in warm biomes, so I headed over to the desert with some spider eyes, since that is the item needed to breed them, and also my brush to get some Armadillo scutes for wolf farmer. First, I spotted a lost camel. I thought they only spawn in desert villages, but for some reason that looked funny to me, seeing one this far from any village. Anyways, after flying around, around for a couple of minutes through the desert and no luck of finding an armadillo, I headed back home. Then I started to sort some of the new items and even some old ones. I copied my trim and assigned new categories in the sorter. I added one for both types of ink sacks, one for the breeze rod and the wind charge, another one for all the shirts and finally one for trials. This includes the ominous bottles and both types of trial keys. Then I also put the new trim into the sorter as well. Then I added items downstairs to represent the new categories. Since I didn't have two of each of the shirts, I set out on the big journey to find all of them. So let's cue a montage. After almost an hour, I have all of the 23 different pottery shirts sorted as well. Next up, I want to start farming the trial chambers. What does that entail? Well, in order to get the other armor trim, all the wind burst books, and the heavy cores, I need to go around the world, find a lot of trial chambers, and loot the ominous vaults there. Each vault can only be opened once. For that, I need a lot of ominous keys, so let's make a farm. But hold on, to get ominous trials, we also need ominous bottles. Let's simply start by making an ominous bottle farm first. Let's grab some resources. And now I need to make some room and then I can build the farm. So let's go.
here we go. This is a rather simple farm, but it gets the job done. All I need to do is turn off my mob switch, spawn these two iron golems, and sit up here. As you can see, pillagers are spawning, they are drawn to the golems and die in the lava. Soon we should also have a captain spawning, which will give us the ominous bottles. There we go. After some AF gang, I have all five different bottles. These are for the five levels of the bad omen effect. Now I can sort them in my storage and move on to some more advancements before we get to the trial key farm. While I installed a portal at the trial chamber I found earlier, I then finally came across armadillos. After using my brush getting us another advancement to get the scutes for wolf armor, I killed the armadillo for funsies and regretted it. Not because of the killing, but there was a second one nearby, meaning I could have bred them and crossed off one more advancement. Luckily, there were plenty more armadillos not too far from here. I bred them and reclaimed this advancement once more. After definitely not slaughtering the entire family, I headed home. Here, I grabbed the necessary resources for the trial key farm. Then I set up a beacon at the trial chambers and started to mine out the entirety of the structure. Even though this is not needed for the farm to work, I still wanted to do it anyway, since it will give me a bunch of the new tough blocks and more importantly, a lot of already oxidized copper blocks. In the midst of mining, I broke one of my pickaxes, so I made some more. Eventually, I broke another one of them. Since I had to fight the mobs spawning from the trials, I used my bow quite a lot, finally bringing it down to the breaking point. As I want to keep all of my used bows, I made a new one and stored my old one in this barrel. Anyways, everything is fully mined out and I already built the first module of this farm. As you can see, the mobs spawn on the wither roses and die. The loot will be picked up through the soul sand and is stored in this chest. The rewards will pop out of the spawner and are pushed over to the soul sand as this farm is facing north, which is the preferred direction of items that are stuck inside blocks. This way we can collect all the loot plus the rewards very easily. Anyways, let's build up the rest of the farm. Now I can open the rest of the walls in this trial chamber unbothered. I marked the ones I had already opened by placing a block on top of them. I then slurped an ominous bottle and activated all the spawners. Soon enough I got some ominous keys and opened the ominous vaults as well. And sure enough I found my first heavy core which is the second ingredient needed for the mace. I traveled home and sorted the ominous keys as well. Then I crafted the mace, grabbed two density 4 books, an unbreaking 3 and a mending book as well. After collecting some more lapis as I ran out of it, I enchanted the mace. There are two more enchantments, breach and whimpers. Sadly we can't combine breach with density. It is the same as with a mending and infinity bow. You have to make a choice and I went for density. Wind burst, however as mentioned we need to farm ominous vaults and hope to find the four wind burst one books to combine them into wind burst three. As the vaults can only be opened once I'll have to go to many different trial chambers. Each of them has around five ominous vaults and from what I've heard it takes about a hundred ominous vaults to get all the way to wind burst three. So I got my work cut out for me. However let's test out the maze without the wind burst. If I deal enough damage I can get another advancement so Let's give it a try. Well, you're lucky I messed that up. And here we go. Then let's craft wolf armor and go find a, well, you guessed it, a wolf. Then let's have you wear this before I commit a war crime. But it's fine. Let's repair the armor and here we go. Removing the armor with shears gives us another advancement. Well then, let's start the grind of getting Wind Burst 3. I took some ominous bottles to the trial key farm, slurped one of them, activated all the spawners and waited. Half an hour later, the spawner's cooldown is over and we can activate them again. This is the process of getting ominous keys. Sure, you can automate this by having a minecart track around this, maybe even connect multiple trial chamber key farms and then simply dispense an ominous bottle every half an hour while holding down right click. But I don't really need this farm after I'm done with this. This video, at least in the foreseeable future. Earlier, I did actually forget about these two ominous vaults here. I managed to get one of the new music discs out of them, but that's about it. After some AFK time here, I have 19 ominous keys. That should be enough for now. Let's go around the world looking for trial chambers. Now, this is where I once again made use of a web tool called Chunk Base. It is really helpful for finding structures and biomes. In this case, I could simply enable trial chambers and fly to the respective coordinates. Weirdly, not all of these trial chambers marked on Chunk Base did actually exist in my world. Most of them did, but every now and then, some of them didn't generate in my world. Anyways, on my first run looting trial chambers, I took out the mobs and even activated spawners while having bad omen, in the hopes I can get some ominous keys back. I opened vault after vault, put waves after waves of mobs, and came close to dying every now and then. After all of that and spending basically all my keys on these ominous vaults, I found the second smithing template, the flow armor trim, some god apples, and most importantly, a wind burst one book, the first of four. So far, I have looted 26 ominous vaults, but there is more. I also came across the new bogged mob and reclaimed 
into Monster Hunted Advancement. I'd say that has been pretty successful up to this point, and it was time to go back to AFKing at the key farm. Now I have 38 keys, which will suffice for now. I then also switched out the ominous bottle icon for a trial category in my storage for a trial key. I guess it's time to go spend all those keys in more trial chambers. This time around, I quickly looted the ominous vaults and moved on to the next trial chamber. I didn't bother with the regular vaults and ignored the mobs as best as I could. After almost an hour, I had spent all the keys and was left with two more heavy cores and another wind burst book. I sorted the heavy core in the rare items category. Now I have all the items sorted from the 1.21, at least the ones I wanted to sort. I then needed a break from the trial chambers, so I shifted my focus to the final advancement I had left to complete, the whole pack. This means I'll have to find all nine different breeds of wolves and tame them. And this was the task I underestimated the most. I thought using chunk base to locate the various biomes would make this a stroll in the park, but that wasn't the case at all. Very well, I grabbed some bones and set out to find the Ashen Wolf, the snowy area where I crossed off a bunch of biomes for adventure time and killed the stray for monsters hunted back in episode 6, wasn't enough to find the wolf. I found a different spot and found my second wolf, the first one being the pale wolf I put the wolf armor on earlier in the video. I decided to gather the wolves on this platform here, so I brought over the ashen wolf and also one of the pale wolves. Seven more to go. On my way to find the black wolf, I came across the chestnut wolf already. Soon after, I also found the black wolf, almost halfway there. But this is where everything went downhill. My luck had run out. I flew over to the mesa biome, which had a sparse jungle nearby for the rusty wolf. Sadly, I couldn't find any, so I looked in the wooded badlands for the striped wolf. Once again, no success. I shifted my attention to the spotted wolf, which spawns in savanna plateaus. There is one near my main base, so I headed over there, but again, I was left with no progress. I started removing some of the passive mobs there in hopes a wolf would spawn, but that didn't seem to work either. I searched the lands for a forest biome to find the woods breed. I came across a regular wolf in this biome, and I started thinking that new wolf breeds might only spawn in newly generated chunks, ones that weren't created in the 1.20. So I flew much further away looking for more of these biomes. While heading towards a sparse jungle, I came across a forest biome and found the fifth wolf, the woods wolf. Traveling further to the sparse jungle, I also found the rusty wolf. This leaves us with only three more. Anyways, after looking through entire biomes of finding absolutely nothing, almost 10,000 blocks away from home, I finally found the striped wolf. Once again, even further from home, I found the penultimate wolf breed, the spotted wolf. This brings our total to eight out of nine. The last one left is also the rarest one, the snowy wolf. Guess what? I traveled even further through snowy growth biome after biome and finally this is where this journey came to an end. I found the last wolf giving me the final advancement in the 1.21. I was so done with these wolves but I am so glad I have them already for an upcoming video. Well then it's time to get back to AFK for more ominous keys and then looting more trial chambers to get our hands on the final two wind burst books. This didn't take nearly as long as getting all the wolves. Rather quickly had I found these books with plenty of keys to spare. In total I had looted 81 ominous vaults which I think is more on the lucky side of things. I combined all the four books to get the hardest enchantment to acquire, Windburst 3. I applied it to the maze and tested it out. I wanted to get a combo by hitting a mob, flying with the elytra and hitting another mob, creating a whole chain. After some failed attempts, I managed to get a quadruple combo. That was pretty sick. Let's not forget about our traditions. Here is the new entry in the logbook for this episode. And of course, I cannot forget about the comment of the video. Thank you, Oscar, for your comment. I have still so much planned for this world and I cannot wait to get it all done. But as always, these massive projects take an enormous amount of time, whether it is planning it all out, designing builds in creative, or then actually building and achieving stuff in hardcore. Anyways, once again, if you want your name on the wall inside the perimeter, simply comment it down below and I'll add it in the following episode. And this is where the story comes to an end. I basically completed the entire update in one video. Next time I'll be working on a world transformation, but that's all I'm gonna say. Just kidding, one more thing. Soon I'll start another Minecraft series on this channel. I am super excited to get started with it. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode.